Today we're going to look at the Jedi Sage Telekinetics and the Sith Sorcerer Lightning class. We do need to cover a little bit of history on this class. At the launch of 7.0, this was an incredibly powerful class, capable of doing dealing a lot of damage. And as we'll see, it's a very survivable class, meaning it can take a lot of damage before it gets defeated. Um, soon after 7.0, it got a nerf, and it was a really harsh nerf that pretty much took most of the damage out of this class, and it was unplayable for a very long time. In recent months, it got an update, and with the latest gear, this class is really back in and is now a playable class. You can really do damage again with this class. Not top-end damage, uh, but really respectable damage, and it's a very, very fun class to play. The telekinetics is great when you see these whooshes flying off and the lightning when it's very loud with all of this uh, lightning strikes taking place all the time. It's a really, really fun class to play. Uh, the main rotation abilities is uh, for the Sage is Weakened Mind, Mental Alacrity, Force Potency, Force Speed, Turbulence, Power of the Force, Telekinetic Burst, Telekinetic Gust, Mind Crush, Project. The equivalent abilities on the Sith Sorcerer side is the Affliction, Polarity Shift, Recklessness, Force Speed, Thundering Blast, Halter Defense, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Flash, Crushing Darkness, and Shock. Our main tree abilities is going to be load, laid out like this. You can see there's a few green options in there. We'll cover those later on. Our gear selection for our tactical is Stormwatch. It applies telekinetic, with telekinetic gust, applies Stormwatch to the target for 15 seconds. And whenever the target takes damage from weakened mind, mind crush, turbulence, a force gust is called down upon the target dealing X amount of damage. So a little bit of extra damage there for us. Gathering Storm Package is our first implant, and whenever sport Force Speed is uh, used, the next direct attack deals 20% more damage. Force Attacks deals 20% more damage while Mental Alacrity is active. And then our second implant is Unmatched Haste. The duration of Mental Alacrity is increased by 5 seconds, and using Force Speed reduces the active cooldown of Mental Alacrity by 5 seconds. There's a lot of synergy between these two implants. Our relics is going to be focused retribution. That's our mastery boost. And the second relic is devastating vengeance, which is our critical boost. Um, we could go with the power relic as well instead of the crit, but we're going to see with our deal loadout that our crit values are going to be a little bit lower. So getting that extra crit is going to be nice. <clears throat> if you don't have the greatest gear, the stats are going to be around always accuracy at around 2694, alacrity around 700, and then the remainder into our critical, which ideally you want around 2000 to really start playing this class. This is the minimum basics, but once you get really, really high-end gear, what you're going to be aiming for is the accuracy around the same number, 2700 is what it turns out to be, alacrity around 3300, maybe a little bit just above 3300, the Cutoff is 3210, but we don't want to be that close because of certain scenarios. And the remainder is in critical, which is going to end up around 2600. This class functions on a priority system. Um, any ability that has brackets around it is a decision point. The square brackets is the cooldown timing. The up arrows indicate that the cooldown starts at the beginning of activating this ability. The down arrows means it starts at the end of activating this ability. This will become clear as to why we have this. We are going to take this priority system and distill it down to a fixed rotation. In doing so, we're going to give up about a thousand DPS, but it's going to help us learn the class very well. And then as we get really good at learning this class, we're going to see this priority system and how we can creep it back in and get that extra thousand DPS back. Um, so that's the plan that we're going to do. Whenever a target doesn't have weakened mind on it, we need to apply it. We're going to refresh that weakened mind constantly. So we only need to apply this once if we're constantly doing da damage to a target. But if a new enemy arrives, we need to reapply that weakened mind or apply that weakened mind. If we left fighting that one enemy and we come back to them, we need to remember reapply weakened mind. Then mental inaccuracy is the highest and next priority uh, we're going to see in a few scenarios where we are going to maybe delay it sh for a short period of time 
um, as we're learning the class so we don't constantly look down at our tray. Force potency is only going to be activated before uh, turbulence, and so it's going to have a nice little slot there. Force speed, just before turbulence, we want force speed to really buff out uh, our big damage dealer. Then turbulence is our big next damage dealer. Uh, power of the force, only when we have activated force potency does force power of the force get activated here. Then um, telekinetic gusts, followed by mind crush, only when it's gold, which telekinetic gusts will do. Telekinetic gust is going to apply stormwatch for us, and mind crush is going to apply crushed uh, dot on the target. Then project is only going to be activated when crushed is on. It has a five second cooldown. Crush lasts six seconds. So really, these three abilities work as a set. Telekinetic us will turn my, mind crushed gold, which that's when we can activate it, followed by project. Then power of the force is going to be activated only when it's outlined in gold. If it's not outlined in gold, it has a long casting ability, and we never want to do that except for one situation, and we'll discuss that. And then telekinetic burst is our filler. Distilling this into a rotation that's fixed looks something like this. Of course, we can mine whenever we start a new enemy. These three abilities um, are instant casts, meaning we can activate them in the gap of a global cooldown. And we'll do that whenever we start a 2-5 sequence. And this is what I'm going to call. There's two abilities and then five abilities. Two abilities, five abilities. And these two abilities are turbulence and power of the force. Turbulence will ensure that power of the force is going to have a gold outline in this sequence. Then telekinetic cast, mind crush, project, and then two telekinetic bursts. The next time we get around, we're going to do turbulence, power of the force, and then five telekinetic bursts. Um, as we can see here, there are seven abilities. We're going to be at a 1.3 second global cooldown. That's 9.1 uh, seconds uh, time frame. Two sets of these, we're going to be around 18.2 seconds for a set of our rotation. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, one of the things that we need to think about is uh, Stormwatch. Our telekinetic gas, we're going to activate at this point. It, the Stormwatch lasts for 15 seconds. At a 1.3 second global cooldown, that's 11 abilities. So 1, 2, 3, 4. These three don't count because they can instant cast. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this turbulence will be affected by the Stormwatch. This the one, when we come back to the rotation, won't be. We will look at how this can be adjusted and later on if we want to get some more DPS in. But we are giving up that 1,000 DPS uh, for learning this class to initially. On the Sith Sorcerer side, the same abilities, the rotation looks like this. Affliction is our dot that we apply whenever we start with a new enemy. Polarity shift, recklessness, and force speed. Instantly activate these before we start this. Thundering blast, halt to defense. Then five abilities, lightning flash, crashing darkness, shock, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. We come back, thundering blast, halt to defense. Lightning bolt five times. This is the main rotation that we're going to do. And what I'm going to do further on is I'm going to do two different passes for you. One following this very strictly, and then one where I use the priority system. And you'll notice about the 1000 DPS difference. Now, you could really spend a lot of time with this class and really edge it out and get even more DPS out of it as you become more comfortable with this class. Let's go over our ability tree. Imbued Force Armor is a defensive ability. It absorbs an X amount of damage and lasts for 30 seconds. But in addition to that, when we use this ability, we, we become Force Imbalanced and cannot benefit from Force Armor again for 20 seconds. Meaning that once we place the shield around ourselves, we get this Force Imbalance and we cannot get another uh, Force Armor around us. So the idea here is that you want to cast this earlier so you can have it when you need it again, it lasts for 30 seconds, so you can constantly refresh it if you need to. Um, it's going to affect the timing of your uh, DPS if you use it all the time. Uh, but if you know you our next two attacks, 
consume a lot less force. So that's one of our first force management uh, modifications. Tidal force, disturbance, telekinetic burst, tur turbulence, and force quake grants tidal force. When activated, tidal force immediately finishes the cooldown on telekinetic wave or power of the force and makes your next telekinetic wave or power of the force activate instantly and consume 50% less force. This effect cannot occur more than once every 10 seconds. We're going to see that whenever we come back to our turbulence, uh, we're going to have power of the force available um, for that reason. Uh, 27, Cloud Mind. Applies Cloud Mind to your enemies, instantly lowering your threat by a moderate amount. Activating Cloud Mind grants a block out, which increases the damage reduction by 25% for 6 seconds. Great damage reduction there. Um, the other options here are not necessarily that great. Uh, we do not want another attack because we don't really have space for another attack. Um, and Clarity, this could be an additional little damage boost. Uh, project deals bonus damage to slow targets, increases your movement speed by 20%. We, this could be an option for a little bit more damage, but it's not really going to be uh, that of big of a deal. The Cloud Mind is really, really good option here for us. Um, then we have Turbulence. Turbulence is going to be our big damage uh, dealer. You'll see that it's going to guaranteed crit all the time. And that's based on uh, targets affected by Weakened Mind. So remember, we always put Weakened Mind on a target. And when Turbulence hits a Weakened Mind target, it crits. There's an additional 25% uh, chance of ability will produce a second blast that strikes the same target for 20% damage. So every couple of times it's going to have another blast that goes out. Concentration reduces the pushback suffered while activating telekinetic wave, power of the force, disturbance, mind crush, turbulence and telekinetic burst by 75%. Additionally you have 25% chance when taking direct damage uh, to gain concentration, which causes your next disturbance or telekinetic burst to activate instantly. This effect cannot occur more than once every 8 seconds and lasts up to uh, 15 seconds. Uh, during the fight, you won't see this in partials, but um, during your fight, you'll often get a glowy telekinetic burst that's extra. Uh, that's nice. It's not essential. It uh, allows us to move around a bit. We can see that. Um, Line 39, Mental Disparity, Dealing Damage with Turbulence, Ticks Weakened Mind. We have Weakened Mind on, we're going, whenever we use Turbulence, we get another tick of Weakened Mind. Um, the other options um, are really for other kind of class plays, um, that's not really f what we're going to focus on. Line 43, Defensive Blast, Turbulence grants Defensive Blast, which increases your damage reduction by 5% for 18 seconds. We use Turbulence uh, twice in our rotation, which is uh, about an 18 second uh, rotation. So that means Turbulence is, this is going to be refreshed all the time. Great option here. One thing to note is that Force Empowerment is our class um, buff uh, for the operation. So if somebody asks you, hey, can you do the class buff for us? Uh, then you would give up your Defense Blast uh, for Force Empowerment. Uh, but for your solo play, or uh, if you, you're not required to fill that uh, task, Defensive Blast is your better choice. Mental Momentum. Mind Crush makes its target vulnerable for 45 seconds and have a 25% chance to tick twice. A direct damage dealt with your Mind Crush and uh, Telekinetic Wave abilities refreshes the duration of your Weakened Mind on affected targets. That's our a refresh of the weakened mind uh, is with mind crash, uh, crush and uh, power of the force. They refresh that. In addition, telekinetic burst increases your force general regeneration rate by 10% for 10 seconds, stacks three times. We're going to be using telekinetic burst quite often, and that's our second uh, force management method that we're doing with our uh, telekinetic burst. Okay. Then Telekinetic Gust blasts the target with quick gusts of force power, which deals X amount of kinetic damage and grants a force gust, which reduces the activation time of your mind crush by half a second. This effect lasts up to 12 seconds. We look at our mind crush, our um, activation time here is 1.6 seconds. We're going to take half a second off of that. 
with uh, preceding it with telekinetic gusts. That's what makes Mind Crush glowing. If we activate that, that little glow tells us that that's uh, active. We can see it's 1.2 seconds. There's the cast time. Um, that's that mechanic that we are effectively exploiting here. Uh, telekinetic defense, your force armor reverberates with force energy, blasting attackers for X amount of energy damage uh, when it absorbs direct damage to you. This effect does not affect the force armors placed on allies and cannot occur more than once each second. So whenever you uh, use your imbued force armor, you gain this additional buff that um, when attackers attack you, for that one uh, moment that it's still alive, it will reflect um, not a, freck, a reflect really, but apply an extra energy damage to the target. The other options here um, is one is reducing the force stun duration uh, at the time. Um, it's cooldown. That's rarely a real benefit. The other one is increased damage reduction by 3%. Um, this is changing, exchanging some damage for a base increased damage reduction this could be a nice option to switch to ear if you're taking a lot of constant damage uh resistance and line 51 is a great option uh, increase the critical damage dealt by telekinetic wave power of the force mind crush turbulence and telekinetic gusts by 12 percent force speed gives two stacks of clamoring force which allow disturbance telekinetic burst to be activated instantly so if we look here, if we activate four speed, that's that glowy telekinetic burst that allows for instant casting. The reason why that's important is um, telekinetic burst is um, one of our abilities that require us to stand still. And we have to stand still to be able to cast this. Um, and now four speed makes this an instant cast so we can activate it while moving. If we consider that, um, we have this concentration that can also give us a telekinetic burst as an instant cast. So during a fight, there's quite a few times where we can, um, don't have to be stationary. All of our other casts are, um, allows us to be casted while moving. Power of the Force, of course, is not, but we're only going to activate Power of the Force when it's glowing. So that's uh, instant cast there. A telekinetic burst summons a burst of telekinetic power that deals X amount of kinetic damage and slows the target for 30 by 30% for three seconds. Telekinetic burst increases your damage reduction by 5% for 10 seconds, stacks up to three times. So now we can see that telekinetic burst has multiple benefits here. We can stack damage reduction up to three times. So this is 15% damage reduction once we start using telekinetic burst. So you can see there's three, two, three stack buffs that are based off of telekinetic burst. In addition, it has a chance, we'll get to this one in a moment. So telekinetic burst is really, really uh, force regeneration and damage reduction of 15%. This makes us a fairly tanking class, a very, very capable class. Telekinetic momentum, disturbance, telekinetic wave, power of the force, telekinetic gust, and telekinetic burst have a 25% chance. And while mental alacrity is active, they have a 50% chance to unleash a second telekinetic blast that strikes the same target for 25% damage. So we look at this one, two, there was an extra one there. There was an extra one there. Since we'll see that mental alacrity comes off cooldown quite a lot, so this is going to happen a lot more often than it appears. In line 64, metaphysical alacrity reduces the cooldown of force speed by 5 seconds and force barrier by 30 seconds. In addition, force speed lasts half a second longer. Mental alacrity increases your movement speed by 100% while active, and active cooldown of force speed is finished when force barrier ends. Okay. Our force speed is a critical part of our damage. Force speed makes your next direct force attack deal 20% more damage, and force attacks deal 20% more damage while mental alacrity is active. Then, with unmatched haste, the duration of mental alacrity is increased by 5 seconds, and using force speed reduces the active cooldown of mental alacrity by 5 seconds. So, 
mental alacrity and four speed are really uh, you know conjoined in what they can do for us um if we look at this metaphysical alacrity by reducing the, the cooldown of four speed by five seconds it's now at 15 seconds so let me just click away from that and you can see that it's at 20 seconds our rotation is roughly about 18 seconds um we could move away from this and select something else like force mend increases your damage reduction by 15 seconds for six seconds additionally reduces the cooldown of force mend by five seconds the advantage of having four speed on a lower cooldown is that whenever we have mental alacrity active our disturb turbulence is going to come off cooldown a little bit faster and our rotation for that one rotation while mental alacrity is active is in a much faster rotation time frame and that's the benefit of having that four speed at 15 seconds instead of 20 seconds we could work with 20 seconds if we didn't have mental alacrity or available on a regular basis um, but if you need more survivability then what you get out of force bend uh, by selecting Val valeria spirit is force bend increases your damage reduction by 15 percent for six seconds additionally reduces the cooldown of force bend by five seconds force bend is on a 30 second time frame by itself it doesn't have the damage reduction but when you select this option it does you would give up some dps and and it will be a noticeable dps at certain stages um but you're trading that for damage reduction so if that becomes a problem of survivability this becomes a potential option let's look at phase walk phase walk is a really handy nifty little ability you can mark a position by activating that phase walk once and once while it's uh, locked in you can activate that ability again and be recalled to that position this is really handy if you have to be in one place at one specific time but you can't be in that location or near that location while fighting um, at a different stage in the fight so the other option is force lift um, this is when you have to disable an enemy for 60 seconds it can't be a champion it has to be a, an, a, an enemy that is uh, stunnable but it is handy in certain cases where that enemy has some mechanics related to it um, it's rare that this is a, a real need for it but know that that it's there telekinetic focal point um, this is a key uh, ability for us a damage dealt by telekinetic wave power of the force and telekinetic gust has a hundred percent chance and damage dealt by disturbance telekinetic burst has a 50 percent chance to grant focal te telekinetics which increases alacrity by one percent stacks up to five times and lasts for 15 seconds as the moment you see me at 20 percent alacrity but if i disable this guild buff that i have You notice me down at 10 percent um, just above 10 percent so now i don't have my guild um, zeal buff at the moment and um, i'm now on a 1.4 second global cooldown because that is at uh, seven uh, seven something percent um, the next uh, global cooldown is going to be uh, around 15 percent so by me activating power of the force see I'm here at three stacks four stacks do a burst there are five stacks now I'm at 15.6 seconds so I very in a fairly reasonable amount of time I get to five stacks of um, this uh, telekinetic focal point that now puts me at 15 percent now i'm in the 1.3 second global cooldown time frame um, but under mental alacrity I, I gain another 20 percent so whenever i activate mental alacrity i'm now at 35 percent i'm now in the 1.1 second global cooldown time frame and that is um really powerful and that's where we get some of our really 
significant DPS. When mental alacrity is active, we gain 20% uh, more damage uh, to force abilities. And at the same time, we are activating abilities much, much faster. Uh, that's the key to this build is going to that 3,300 um, alacrity. Um, of course, you can tune this down if you are not going to do um, content where you lose your guild buff. Uh, but this is the numbers for we're going to take Mind Ward, reduces the damage taken while by all the periodic effects by 15%. This is a really, really nice option. Um, and then for Tremors, we have each telekinetic momentum and mental momentum reduces the active cooldown of mental alacrity by one second. In addition, being interrupted grants unshakable for four seconds. This can only occur once every 15 seconds. Okay. Uh, targets affected. The other option is confound. Um, this is not really a great selection option there. Targets affected by a weakened mind are slowed by 30% for its duration. I like the damage reduction a lot more. Uh, egress. Uh, this is really more for PvP. Um, because it breaks the slows that you have. If you really have a big problem with that, then you can select this option. In line 78, we have magnifying vibrations. Project deals 35% more damage to targets affected by a mind crush, and mind crush deals 10% more damage while mental alacrity is active. In addition, turbulence grants reserved light, making your next benevolence instant and increases its healing by 30% max two stacks. So whenever we activate Turbulence, you can see Benevolence is going to be glowing. It has another stack. And when we activate this, it has a bigger heal than normal. Okay. Show that again. Okay. So it's also an instant cast. Um, there's not a casting that we need now before that. And that's a great option there for that. Um, so... We just need to understand that Force Mend is a different kind of instant cast. So if you look at the global cooldown, this curtain that is over an ability, if I activate this, it is a curtain as well. Whereas if I activate Force Mend, it never gains that curtain or never generates a curtain. So Force Mend is your first ability that you want to go to if you need an additional little heal. Of course, consider imbued Force Armor to give you that damage resistance. And then Force Barrier is a bubble you put around yourself. And while this is active, uh, you are really capable of eating a lot of damage. Um, it also is a hard cleanse, so it's a great defensive in that stance. Uh, our interrupt is Mind Snap. Uh, this interrupts a target. If, so if you ask to interrupt the target, use Mind Snap. Our cleanse is Restoration. And this is really, really nice for this class because you can self-cleanse yourself. And you always have a force stun available. So you have a stun that you don't have to select for. Um, and then you also have a rejuvenate, which the nice thing about rejuvenate is you can be running around to see if benevolence isn't glowing, you can't activate it. But for rejuvenate, you can. And it's an actual significant heal um, if you do need that little heal at the end. We have Force Wave as a nice pushback uh, that we have available for us all the time. Med Pack and uh, Shield Adrenal is really, really good options. So try and have a uh, Shield always available. It really rounds out this class very well because we already have already a really good damage reduction built into our rotation. Something like a Shield Adrenal really makes this class very, very tanky. Uh, we're going to have a look at our uh, rotation. So uh, my layout here is that I've got my weakened mind ready to be applied on any target that I is new to me. Then I have my force speed, mental alacrity, and force potency ready to go. Uh, turbulence, power of the force, is that, that's that one, two, and then five abilities after. Here's my telekinetic gust, mind crush, project, and two telekinetic bursts, or five telekinetic bursts. So it's one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I have my force mend ready to go if I need that. Um, my imbued force armor is right here and then my force barrier. So I would normally apply
apply weakened mind to a target, force speed, mental alacrity, force potency, one, two, three, two, two, then turbulence, power of the force, and then five, one, two, three, four, five, and then force speed, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two. So that's that one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So it's a two, five that you can think about it with a five keeps alternating. Really handy technique. Um, so let's talk a little bit about adjusting for certain scenarios. What we want to look at is mental alacrity you see here counting down. If I activate four speed, we see that five second drop. So the first place where we can get DPS boost is when we have a scenario where mental alacrity is at five seconds or below five seconds or just above five seconds. Like here, I want to activate four speed before I'm getting back to my rotation. So as I'm getting to turbulence, and this happens more often than you might uh, believe, where mental alacrity is about to come off cooldown, but force speed is ready, I can activate force speed, activate mental alacrity, and then go right back to my rotation. So this is one of the first places where we can increase our DPS by adjusting whether mental alacrity, um, if it is already on off of cooldown, we want to activate it first, then force speed, getting that additional reduction in time because if we activate mental alacrity then four speed we we take five seconds off of the cooldown so that's the first place where we want to do that um, if mental alacrity is about to come off cooldown but it's not yet ready and we at the start of uh, our sequence of turbulence we might want to activate four speed to bring it off cooldown so we can activate it sooner rather than later so that's the first little place where we can make some DPS. Then if we look at this top line in the rotation, um, Turbulence and Mind Crush are going to kind of like sync up a little bit. So the second place where we can create some extra DPS is sometimes what we want to do um, in our rotation. Actually, whenever this happens, we want to do Turbulence then telekinetic gust, then mind crush, project, and then come back to power of the force, and then two telekinetic bursts. So that's the first place, taking this telekinetic burst and moving it right off to project. That's one of the first places you can gain a little bit of DPS because of the timing. That's the first adjustment you can make to your DPS. Um, the second one, but that's the one where you'll start seeing the priority being a bit more uh, being followed by moving this power of the force to the end of the project. Okay, first time thing. The second thing that can happen is that because of timing with mental alacrity and us moving this ability backwards, we'll find quite often that mind crush is going to come off cooldown before turbulence. I almost one global cooldown. So what will happen is we're in our rotation and we'll see that telekinetic gust is already off cooldown. Mind crush cooldown and turbulence is cooldown is a little bit uh, different. And let me go to the settings where you want to see this in your preferences. If we go to uh, user interface, cooldown settings, show cooldown text, I use style one and style one, um, but the show this cooldown text, so what you'll see is you'll see when everything, anything is off of cooldown, it has this counter five seconds, and if you get down to this last seconds, you'll see the milliseconds being, uh, the hundreds of a second being uh, counted down, and then we can see that with mind crush as well. If we see mind crush as a head, the next thing where you can improve your rotation is doing something like telekinetic gust, mind crush, then turbulence as it comes off cooldown, project power of the force, and then go to your one, two, three, and the, if I was faster here, it would be four telekinetic bursts. It 
seems weird, but if you follow the two five sequence, this sequence is going to pop up and it's in a modification on the sequence. And the next one will be the turbulence, power of the force, telekinetic gust, mind crush, project, uh, and telekinetic burst. And the reason why the power of the force now moves behind turbulence is not because of force potency, but mind crush is now an additional global cooldown further behind. So you need to fill in again. So uh, let me just build it up and we can see this. What I'm doing is I'm building up my stacks without uh, activating anything of consequence. Okay, so let's do, let's say mental alacrity. I'm just going to do this. I move project a little bit further back. Three, four, and then watch this coming back. See that sequence? I'll demonstrate it again. It doesn't need mental alacrity, so I'll just keep the stacks up. So it doesn't matter if the sequence that is going to be important, you're going to be in some rotation. You're going to see mind crush come off cooldown just a second before turbulence, but we want to activate telekinetic gust before mind crush. So when we see this mind crush at about 1.3 second we want to activate telekinetic gust mind crush turbulence project power of the force and then four telekinetic burst one two three four and then turbulence watch this and we go back telekinetic gust project and then two telekinetic burst that is a unique rotation that you will see creep up. So we talked about timing our mental alacrity and force speed. We talked about moving power of the force to behind project when we're in that first set of rotation. When we do those two things, the sequence that I just showed you will creep up where turbulence is just going to be on a slightly longer cooldown than mind crush. And then this sequence sort of evolves itself out. And the telekinetic burst is then going to be cut out, one of them. That gives us our extra DPS. So what I'm going to show you is two uh, passes. One where I strictly follow this rotation. And one where I enhance it by going closer to that priority sequence. And you'll notice that the difference in DPS is about a thousand DPS. Um, so it's very minor really in the scheme of it. That's why I'm saying learn this 2-5 rotation because what that does for you is it prevents you from having to look at your, your tray all the time and looking up here. And if I can stress anything, being able to look up where you doing activities around you, where you're standing while you're doing a complicated fight, that is way more uh, useful than having to look at your tray all the time to see what's up next. As you become more comfortable with the playing this class, these little nuances will creep in and you will recognize this pattern. You'll see the cooldown on turbulence, you'll see the cooldown on mind crush, and you'll be like, here is that one of sequence creeping out. Go telekinetic cast, mind crush, for turbulence, project, power of the force, um, and then four telekinetic bursts. You'll see turbulence back, power of the force, telekinetic cast, mind crush, project. And it happens under force potency or without force potency. So that little nuance sequence will creep up. Um, I would say every third or so rotation you'll see it pop up. And it modifies your rotation. So you, you're basically in your main rotation throwing one telekinetic burst out of the sequence. Whether you're under mental alacrity or not. If mental alacrity does drop off in one of these uh, rotations, you might actually lose another telekinetic burst um, or you might have to add another telekinetic burst. And what that's going to be determined by is whether turbulence is off cooldown after that fourth uh, telekinetic burst.
Okay, let's have a look at our opening rotation. So our opening rotation doesn't actually involve much. It just means that we can precast power of the force. So when we can, not in combat, we can activate that. You can see it's a long casting. But as we're going to get countered in in most fights, we can activate this and get that initial uh, fight going. So let's have a look at what that would look like. And the main thing we'll see here, see there we got two wolves, so we got two telekinetic focal point stacks. Then we would go weaken mind and we will just go back into our normal rotation. And then there we got another double wolf, so now we are at four stack of telekinetic focal point. And then if we do mind crush, there's the fifth one. So that's the main thing about recasting this power of the force is we getting our telekinetic focal points up very quickly and that's the main purpose behind precasting it if we we're already in combat and we're just switching targets or there's a little bit delayed don't waste your time about precasting for power of the force power of the force really is intended for when you you know you're about to start damage and you have time before you need to start doing that damage where you can precast there is exception where you think about situations like uh, Soa, the last boss, the Eternity Vault, when you're on the ground level and he's got his shield up and he's about to get knocked down by some uh, pillar that's going to come down. You can precast Power of the Force and get some of your stacks back. Connected to that, we should think about what ability would we use if we are in combat but we can't do damage to a target. Uh, we don't want to just sit there and not do anything because we have all of these buffs that can drop off. And our filler that we can use is Telekinetic Burst because this maintains everything for us, right? It's going to build up these three stacks that we'd like to have of damage reduction. Over time, it's going to refresh our Telekinetic Focal Point. So when we can't do actually damage, but we have a target that we can actually attack, uh, what we want to do is just keep doing Telekinetic Burst and that maintains everything for us it maintains our damage reduction it maintains our uh, focus regeneration it maintains our alacrity buff that we need and this is our filler that we can just keep good, uh, using and we just want to pull this in and then when we're ready to do damage we can now immediately go to start the whole beast up and really start hitting this sets us up to be ready to do really fast damage right off the start so when we not a lot when we can't do actual damage but we have something that we can hit we want to be doing telekinetic bursts and filling this in this is not a replacement for when you have to do stop doing damage if there's a fight where you have to stop doing damage don't do telekinetic bursts it'll get you in trouble um, telekinetic burst is for when you need to maintain your buffs so that you don't lose them and that's its purpose okay we're now going to have a look at the static rotation parsing it's running at two times speed if you want to look at the normal speed uh, just set your playback speed to half speed and then you can follow along um, i'll let this play through and you can skip this if it's not interesting to you and you can see what the actual results are
okay in this part I'm going to improve my setup a little bit by introducing some of those DPS modification strategies we talked about earlier you're going to notice that the task load is a little bit more we I now have to really pay attention to the tray um, and in addition to that I'm gaining about a thousand DPS now I am no savant at the TK Sage you can definitely do better than me if you practice and you adjust for the different scenarios that might creep up you could go way beyond what I'm capable of but here is a posh that you can enjoy We're now looking at the Sork Lightning, uh, doing the adjusted strategy for doing more DPS. Have fun and have a look at how it's done on the Sork side and enjoy those lightning strikes. I hope you find this guide useful and remember to have fun.